There's a real possibility Brexit won't happen and that would be an outrage, so says Brendan O'Neill, commentator and editor of Spike magazine. About a week ago today, this morning, we were waking up to the news that the UK had voted itself out of the EU. And Brendan O'Neill makes his comments in a hard-hitting article for Spike magazine. Uh, he also blasts the attitudes of many Remain supporters towards Leave supporters. He's on the line this morning. Good morning, Brendan. Hi there. And we're also joined by Bishop Stephen Lowe. Uh, good, morning. good morning, good morning, Bishop. Um, what do you think, Brendan? You're, you're being quite critical in this article of the people that did vote to uh, to remain. It's not so much the people who voted to remain, but what they're saying about the people that voted to leave. Well, it's not all Remain voters are saying these kind of things. You know, that's 16 million people. You know, my friends, my neighbours. These are sure. normal people. I'm talking about journalists and politicians and the leaders of the Remain campaign. They have been saying really vile things about Leave voters, as if they are, they're saying they have low information, they're racist, they're stupid, they're not really cut out for big political decisions. We're seeing the return of very old, ugly arguments against the idea that the masses should take part in democracy. And I find that really worrying. There's a line in your article, Brendan, which says uh, they now run a serious risk of talking Britain into a state of crisis. Do you really think that it could get that bad if if it's almost hyped up to the extent where people really start to panic? Absolutely. I think the political class has behaved so recklessly in response to this result because it took them so much by surprise because they are so utterly disconnected from ordinary people. They don't know what ordinary people are thinking. So it took them by surprise and they are behaving... And and the likes of Boris, uh, Boris Johnson does? No, he doesn't, not at all. But I think some of the other um, leaders of the Leave campaign do. Gisela Stewart, for example, the Labour MP. But I think the thing is that they are behaving like children in response to this result. They are saying that we're heading for economic catastrophe, racism is on the rise, Britain is going to end in a blaze of fury. It's it's a terrible attitude that they're taking. Do you you think, though, that the the Leave campaign would have been more gracious in defeat then? They wouldn't have been saying that we're missing out on a real golden opportunity here, you know, to leave the EU and to etc. to do, you know, make our own deals. Would they have been more graceful? Uh, Of course, they would have expressed regret and they would have said this is the wrong decision. And they would have said, we really hope that sometime in the future we can decide once again whether or not to stay or leave in uh, Europe. But I think the way that the uh, leaders of society are responding, the political class itself, is immature and irresponsible. The more that they say we're heading for economic disaster, the more likely it is that businesses will not invest or hire in Britain because they think it's heading for economic disaster. There's a real danger that they are going to talk themselves into the crisis, that they are trying to blame us, the voters, for bringing about. You obviously voted to to, to leave, but what makes you think that we might not get Brexit now? Because I think there's a real reluctance among the political elite to see this through and to make it happen. And there's a real pressure on them now from campaigners, from leading journalists, from Labour MPs, to overturn the vote. You know, you have a Labour MP like David Lammy openly saying that this vote is madness and Parliament must overthrow it. You have uh, supposedly radical protesters gathering in Trafalgar Square demanding that Parliament overthrow the will of the people. This, to me, is a very reactionary moment. We are having marches and protests and demands by the minority to overthrow the will of the majority. That, to me, is a it's, terrifying It's, a, it's a, a very small majority, but let's bring, bring the bishop in at this point. Bishop, you were a, a Remain uh, voter. You, um, is it anti-democratic, what you're doing now? Well, first of all, I would say that majority of Remainers are actually saying they regret the decision, uh, but certainly accept it, because I think it is very important that the democratic will of the people is acknowledged. And uh, if you look at Theresa May's approach, then she is saying, I am going to work for Brexit, even although she was on the Remain side. So I think that's a little bit unfair. And secondly, I think if you look at somebody like Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, he is simply saying, look, this is how all the indicators are pointing at the moment, that we're going to have to cut interest rates to, to virtually nothing in order to try and prevent the recession, which is certainly now looking as, as if it is appearing, which was one of the prophecies that took place um, uh, by the Remain, uh, made by the Remain campaign. You were, now, you, that, you, that's a reality. Yeah. You can't actually say that this is something caused by the Remain um, campaigners. I think that's totally unfair. These are things which 
I think even many of the Brexiteers were afraid of that, uh, that there would be a devaluation of the pound, that there would be a, a fall on the stock markets and so on. And all those points have actually been proved true, not caused by the Remain campaign. You were pretty outspoken on uh, on Stephen's Five Live show uh, at the weekend. Have a listen to this. I, I think the most... The most uh, the, the biggest issue for the large number of Brexiteers during this referendum was immigration. I don't think anybody denies that. And if you look at all the Vox Pops and the campaigns that took place, um, both by the formal Leave campaign and the uh, um, uh, UKIP uh, uh, posters and things of that kind, they were appealing to something which is, I think, deeply sad now within British society, and that is a very clear xenophobic uh, streak which wants uh, people who are, inverted commas, different from British, which is the language that has been used time and time and time again, to be pushed out. And uh, that's been the motivation, I fear, for many people who voted in favour of Brexit. Do you stand by that, Bishop? I do indeed, and I'm afraid, and very sad to say, that the number of racist incidents uh, and graffiti, uh, destruction of properties belonging to a, a nation shopkeeper I saw, uh, which has risen markedly since the result of the campaign has been um, announced. And as a result, uh, I think many people who were in no way involved because they're not actually European citizens in the situation have found themselves the subject of vitriol, public abuse, uh, uh, and frankly, sheer naked racism. Brandon? Now, that, that is only, I am not accusing, I mean, we quite give it, Benny, before you bring Ben back in, I am not accusing the Brexit campaign of stimulating that in any way, shape, or form. But what I am saying is it has given permission, one way or another, to a certain strand of British society to do these sort of terrible things to people who are actually innocent victims and here legally. Brandon? Uh, Brendan, has, has, has this increased the incidence of, of racist hatred on the streets, or is this simply that we're now paying more attention to them than we were before? I think we're paying more attention to them, and I think that is extremely cynical on the part of people who are at the top of the Remain campaign, because they are exploiting the politics of fear, a racialised politics of fear, to try and score points against their political opponents. That's disgusting. But when the bishop said in that clip that a majority of people he thinks voted leave because they're concerned about immigration, that is false. That is untrue. If you look at both surveys that have been done post-referendum, immigration comes about second or third in people. It comes third. second, and the other issue and is sovereignty. Hold on, I haven't finished. And sovereignty and immigration are Hold on a second, Bishop. No, let no, him no, finish. The main issue is the right of Britain to make its own laws free from the interference of Brussels. So... The, the, what you said in that clip was untrue. That's the first thing. The second thing to bear in mind is this week a report was released which said that 2,888 Africans have died on the shores of Europe this year so far as a result in large part of European policies. So I think it's really hypocritical of Remain supporters to say that Leave voters are racist while their institution is responsible for things like that. I think that's totally unfair. Oh, right. the, the, first of all... The facts are that the police have got a massive rise in reported racist incidents since the vote was announced. A massive rise. And uh, story after story after story, which you will have read, Brendan, uh, of people being abused uh, because of the colour of their skin, whether we like it or not. Let's, let's see what we're talking about at home here. Good, Martin, good morning. Hello there. Martin, you want to have a chat with the bishop. What do you think? Uh, I live in Birmingham. And I work the Northwest and the West Midlands. I cover the towns of Oldham, Bolton, Accrington, all the way down to Stoke, etc. I've seen how the EU has decimated the communities in the North and in the more regional parts of the UK. Now, I think the, the Bishop is a particular example of uh, disingenuous, patronising and arrogance. The, the, the thing that I would like to say as well, that they try to... Uh, control the narrative that this is a, a right-wing xenophobic uh, uh, agenda when when we know that the vast majority of the people that voted to leave were actually working class labour supporters and the other thing is let's look at somebody like the Beast of Bolsover uh, uh, who is Dennis Skinner 
Dennis Skinner wanted to get out of the EU. So this is not a right wing narrative. And to, to the other, la the last thing I'd like to say is that you know when you, when you're actually trying to castigate a whole group of people, and we're talking 17 million people here, to, that they decided to do this on the basis of immigration alone is completely outrageous and completely disingenuous. Bishop Lowe. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that. I said it is no. What I said was that the immigration for uh, many people involved in the Brexit here. campaign was a major issue. And secondly, that what has worried me that since the uh, result has been announced, it has given permission to some uh, a really nasty strand within British society to come out from underneath their stones and behave really badly towards a, particularly Asian people. Well, well, hold on, can I also make one last point? Sorry. Nothing to do with the, the EU vote whatsoever. Can I also make a point? Go Sorry, ahead, can I make a point? Yeah, uh, in Birmingham, quite a lot of the people who voted to leave were actually from the Asian community. I know, I agree. I fully understand. Right, so, so, no, hold on, hold on. Let me make my point here. It's that, you know, you're trying to make a, a sort of connection. We know that people's uh, fears are inflamed, etc. at this time. But we know there's been also ageist comments about white old people that they should die. This is actually being put out in the actual social media. So, you know, let's not get carried away with the, with, with the totality of this. There have been about 94 racist attacks the week before that was about 54. There's been an increase, but I think that's to do with the immediate aftermath of a, of a sensational event. Martin, but, how, know, how, how, how would you feel, Martin, if they did, and obviously I'm not saying this is necessarily going to happen, but if there was a second referendum, would you feel like you were cheated out of your absolutely. initial vote? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think to have another referendum would be a complete kick in the teeth to a democracy. And to be honest, let's look at the, the reality of Europe. We know that in Southern Europe, Italy, Greece, uh, Spain, all those countries, the youth unemployment is about 50%. We know the problems of Europe. The whole thing is disintegrating. Now, people made the choice, not because I made the choice on a, on a number of levels, but I think we're losing the plot. And I think I totally agree with Brendan. His analysis is probably more measured. I think the bishop has come on here and has been completely disingenuous. Brendan, do, you, Brendan, do you think that there'll be an attempt to overthrow this, a, a parliamentary vote or another means to try and get a second referendum in? I think there will be. And I think Martin's absolutely right that that would be an outrage against democracy. The people have spoken. It was a pretty, it was a clear majority, 17.5 million people, which is the largest number of people in British history that has ever voted for something. To overthrow that or to undermine that would be really outrageous. And I think Martin's also right to say that most of the bigotry is actually coming from the leaders of the Remain campaign who are talking about old people and white working class people and poor people in the most disgusting way as not fit for politics, unintelligent, too scared to take things seriously. If you want to see real bigotry in public, open bigotry, you should look at the people who ran, who are the top of the Remain campaign. I'm sure they, they, they would try, they would deny that. Brendan, I want to, I mentioned this earlier, Tony Blair in the Daily Telegraph today, actually, he says the people do have a right to change their minds, uh, but for, but that is not for now. So that's, that's him suggesting, surely, uh, from, from his experience, gloating maybe a little bit, that this will happen, there'll be a second referendum. I think it's looking like there could be a second referendum or that Brexit will just be kicked into the long grass and people will hope that the momentum will fizzle out. And I think that will be an utter disaster for democratic politics. This was a huge, positive, democratic moment. People who normally don't get involved in politics took part. They voted. They made their voices heard, sometimes for the, some of them for the first time ever. To overturn that now would send the message to those people that you aren't good enough for politics. You aren't clever enough for politics. You should leave politics to us people who are better educated. That would be a real disaster and infinitely worse than the doom that is being predicted by the people on the Remain. Can I ask Brendan a question? Because yes. I think it's an important one. Quickly. Uh, Bren Brendan, I mean, if whoever is the next prime minister, in terms of the negotiations with the European Union, finds that they cannot get access to the single market without sacrificing uh, freedom of movement, uh, the, the issue on the freedom of movement. Um, what then? Because that was the basis very much of the Brexit campaign, that we would be able to control freedom of movement and also be able to maintain uh, access to the single market. Now, I have, as I think, a, a, a reasonable knowledge of the situation uh, from the European side, 
that there is not going to be a readiness in Europe to grant the British government uh, complete freedom of access to the single market. Says who? Is that, is that not more scaremongering, though? Mm. How do we know? It is not scaremongering. This has been made clear by leading members of the European Union, both politicians and uh, commissioners, uh, over the last few days. But now, surely, the, surely, though, Bishop, is, is, there, is there not an not issue that we, we simply I'm don't know? I'm Brendan whether or not, if that happens, and that was the basis of the Brexit campaign, he doesn't feel that there is a, a very real crisis of the, 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 the deal that has been sold to the British people. Well, I, I'm in favour of freedom of movement, and I will argue for freedom of movement in this new climate that we've created. And also, let's not forget, a lot of Leave campaigners are in favour of freedom of movement. They've already started campaigns and petitions demanding that all EU citizens currently in Britain must be allowed to stay here. They're also arguing that in negotiations, we must make the case for freedom of movement. So you're wrong to say that freedom of movement is this crazy obsession of everyone who is opposed to the EU. I favour freedom of movement. I'm opposed to That's the That's brilliant. Union. I'm delighted to hear it, but I'm afraid many of your Brexit supporters will not be happy about that particular OK, statement. and I'm afraid to tell you that Brussels is not in favour of freedom of movement either, as, testi as testified by the thousands of Africans who wash up dead on its shores every single year because they are shut out from this freedom of movement, which is racially discriminatory. I agree. I agree with white, you entirely. It allows white agree. Europeans freedom of movement, but not black Let, Africans. Let's bring in uh, some more callers. John, good morning. Good morning, John. I'll ask the Bishop a question. Go ahead. It's not about race. I would suggest to the bishop that it goes over to London's East End. I lived there for uh, uh, 13 years. I was rector in Newham. And what was the change in London's East End? And I was in, in the London's East End a matter of uh, two or three weeks ago. What and is the change I, now in London's East is End? enormous because what has happened is that the white working class Where are they? moved out of the East End of London. And why have they moved out? Pardon? And why have they moved out? Well, they've moved out for a number of reasons. First of all, um, there has been a constant move out into Essex from the people of the East End over the last... What's your point, years. John? What's my point? The point is, I lived in London's East End, and over the years, i slowly seen primary schools being changed dramatically. Well, my children went to primary school, and there were a majority of... Um, it's many, not about race, but I'll say it's many white kids. But, but, but what are you saying? Race. If it's not about race, what are well, you saying? Many white kids go to primary schools now. What, what, does that, what does that matter, though? There's many people that are not white that are born and bred in the UK. It's an absolute change in one area of so London. Would you want, what, what, the mass immigration, which was uncontrolled, which forced the white population, who were called Cockneys, to have now moved out of London. So, what, so, John, tell me, what does that have to do with the EU? It had to do with the Brexit vote because working class areas all over and all over Great Britain had changed dramatically due to mass immigration, and it was done by the Labour Party. Brendan, um, the working class have now rebelled and they've said enough is enough. We want let, let our, Brendan answer there. Communities back. I think the working class have rebelled. If you look at the um, the, the class divide in the vote, it's extraordinary. You know, uh, huge numbers of poor people and working class people voted against the EU. I don't think that the reason they did that is because of mass immigration. My experience from coming from a working class part of London, which used to be English, then it became Irish, now it's quite Somali and it changed, it's changed over 30 or 40 years. My experience from talking to these people is that their concern is not with migrants, it's with a political establishment that either ignores them or treats them with utter contempt. Everyone I've spoken to, every working class person I've spoken to who voted Leave says that they wanted to give the authorities a bloody nose because they are sick of being looked down upon. They're sick of being called racist because they hold certain views. Do you They're think, sick of being treated as scum. Yeah, but do you think, though, that did you kept, for example, did they really play that migration card during the, when, the run up to the referendum? They, of course they did, uh, particularly Farage with his obnoxious poster. But I think we have to bear in mind that there were huge numbers of Leave campaigners. As I mentioned, there was Gisela Stewart from the Labour Party, who was the most rational voice. There was Drida Say Mitchell, who's a black novelist, working class from the east of London. She was a great voice for Brexit. She tapped into a lot of 
working class disgruntlement among both white working classes and black working okay. classes. Colin, this is not a race. Colin's issue. on the line. Good morning, Colin. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, I got a really very simple question, and I like a very simple answer. Good luck. From someone in the Remain camp. We have a second referendum next month, for example, and the Leave campaigners win again. What are you going to say or do then? Bishop? Dead air, folks. Is the bishop there? Ah, the bishop must be away. What do you think, Brendan, if there's a second referendum, if it does actually happen? Do, do you think it would be the same result? Um, well, this is... Up or do you think would it spur... A lot of people were saying that the younger younger people were more likely to vote Remain, but they didn't bother to vote, so... Exactly. I think there's a real danger that there will be a second referendum, which I think is outrageous, mm -hmm. and that the Remain side will win it, precisely as you say, because young people and others will get more engaged where they didn't first time around. We only have to look at what happened in Ireland. They rejected the Lisbon Treaty. They were forced to vote again under terrible circumstances, effectively being morally and financially blackmailed and being told you'll lose all this money and Ireland will lose its prestige if you dare to vote out again. That's the kind of climate we can expect to see. It will not be an open, free, democratic debate. It will be a whole load of pressure on people not to be so stupid. So the people have spoken and they've spoken clearly, 17.5 million of them, the highest number ever to vote for anything in British history. We have to heed that and we have to act on that right now. Uh, Carmel's on the line. Good morning, Carmel. Morning. Um, Benny, I don't know if the bishop's gone, but it's... Wait, we're trying to get him back here, but he appears to have dropped off. It might be a problem with his phone. OK, well, I mean, I can just, I can just put it to Brendan um, for his views too, because I do agree with what Brendan has, it has said um, all morning. Um, I believe that both the main leave and the main remain campaign, the, the, the head of those campaigns, turned it into a migrant issue, a scapegoated migrants for the problems that Europe has caused. Uh, but let's be honest, working class communities have been impoverished in the European Union. It's the European Union that has caused um, many of the difficulties we've had sold off post office, forced to sell off, and would be forcing the sell off of our public services if we remained in Europe. But the issue I have is about the question of racism, because the bishop seemed to suggest that um, racism, and others have suggested this too, that racist attacks have increased as a result of a, a leave vote, that uh, racists have been emboldened. What I would say is racists have been emboldened because of the campaign that was waged by uh, Farage, by Boris Johnson, but also by Cameron and his supporters. Um, they allowed migrants to be scapegoated. But the question I have is this. Is it not possible that racist attacks would have been even more had, we, had there been a, a remain vote? That's a fair question, Carmel. I want to just try and squeeze in Eddie before the news. Good morning, Eddie. You've got 30 Good seconds. Morning. How are you doing? Fire away. No, just uh, this is what I want to talk about. Just on the constitutional issue first, it is not any legal or constitutional basis. Uh, it's really an advisory thing, and in terms of a moral thing, surely a, a, a contest that is won with such blatant lies on the 350 million, the no borders. Quick response to that, Brandon. I don't think it was lies because if you look at the reason most people voted, it's because of how Brussels can make laws that have an impact on Britain, and that is true, and that's right. the main reason most people gave. Brendan, thank you very much. Thanks to our callers and to Bishop Stephen Lowe as well. We've got a proper bad boy on the programme. Stephen hasn't returned uh, after your 10 o'clock news.